Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with the uh, with the little Mini Cooper. Now, what we're going to be doing in this one is quite a big upgrade. Um, this is something that uh, uh, the car needs for its next MOT. Now, um, at the last MOT there was an advisory for uh, heavily corroded trailing arms on this car. Now, in particular the one on this side uh, was, uh, was mentioned as an advisory uh, and that's because the um, the trailing arm itself is, is, is rusty, it's covered in corrosion, they're made of pressed steel on the Gen 1 Mini um, and uh, yeah if, uh, if I don't do something about it fairly soon then it's going to be um, you know it's going to become a failure, uh, a failure point for the for, for an MOT possibly on the next one so obviously uh, rather than just leave it to uh, an, an, you know in the lap of the gods I thought I'd better do something about it. So to that end what I did was I did a little bit of research um, and I've since realized that the uh, the alloy arms from the Gen 2 Mini um, can be pretty much made to fit almost as a bolt-on with a few little exceptions. So what I've done is I've bought a pair of uh, Gen 2 Mini arms. Um, here they are, well here's one of them. Um, and as you can see they're made of uh, cast alloy uh, as opposed to pressed steel. And they're a lot lighter for a start being uh, alloy and not steel um, so you know there's going to be obvious handling benefits to um, to to this upgrade as well because um, reducing unsprung weight does have uh, handling advantages um, would I notice those possibly not however these won't corrode like the pressed steel ones will so yeah um, what we'll do we'll have a quick look at everything that I've got here what we're going to go set up about uh, how we're going to get these on the car and then, uh, yeah, we can uh, get on with the process. Okay, so what I did was, uh, on eBay, at a uh, breaker, um, a, a fairly good breaker actually, I've used them a couple of times for a few various things, um, had a pair of these for sale, and I think, if I remember rightly, I paid £140 for the pair shipped. Now, that came with all the bolts that I need um, as well, so, uh, you know, um, none of those are missing. Um, the wheel bearings there, and also the front mount with the bush is, uh, is there as well. Additionally, the um, ABS sensor is included. Now, I'm not 100% certain, but I believe that there is a difference between the ABS sensor on the Gen 2 and the Gen 1. Um, I think the actual sensor itself, the actual um, hall sensor is, is uh, slightly deeper, uh, although I can't be certain. Um, there is certainly a different part number on, on Rio Loia. Okay, so, um, what I've also done, um, despite the fact that we've got a wheel, but the wheel uh, hub and bearing, um, and you know the uh, the front mount with the bush is I've, I've bought replacements for those so here is the front bush is a replacement front bush this is a Lem Forda one um, you know it, there doesn't seem to be anything particularly wrong with this one but I thought while we've got it like this we might as well replace it so that's one thing we're gonna do and the other thing is a brand new wheel bearing so that is going to replace this now this one there was a little bit of noise in it when I spin it like that, so that could, um, you know, turn into a drone at, um, at road speed. So while it's like this, it's held on with four bolts, and they're pretty cheap, so why not replace it? Now, um, two things that are specific to the Gen 2 that we do need to talk about um, if you're going to try and put Gen 2 arms onto a Gen 1 Mini. Now, the first thing is the um, anti-roll bar drop link. If I pull that out of the bag, as you can see here. These, these ball joints, the, these threaded sections here are longer on this end than they are at this end. Now the Gen 1, they're equal. Um, they're both this long, so the Gen 2 has a longer one. And that is because here, where it mounts in, is deeper. Being alloy, 
um, it has to be deeper. The uh, the pressed steel ones is literally just a hole and then you just put the nut in and it bolts in. But these are deeper, so you need uh, a deeper threaded section. Now, what I have heard of people doing is actually grinding this ray section here up away. Now, I didn't really like the idea of that. It's like that for a reason, so I thought I'd stick with it and just replace them with Gen 2, Gen 2 mini drop links. The other thing, um, which I've got just here, I'll pull this bolt out. There, this is the bolt for the uh, shock absorber. Now, this cup here on the Gen 2 Mini, the bottom of the shock absorber has this has this dish um, effect to to its mount, which the Gen 1 does not have. the 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 bottom is completely flat on the Gen 1. So, if you want to use Gen 1 shock absorbers with a Gen 2 arm, what you need is one of these little adapters. Now, these are pretty cheap. They're on eBay. I think they were 30 quid for a pair. Um, from Modern Mini. Um, uh, I'll leave the links to that in the description so you can go get them or you, you know, I mean, if you've got a lathe, you can spin them up yourself quite easily. And they simply fit in there and allow Gen 1 shock absorbers to be used on a Gen 2 arm. Now, alternatively, if you're requiring new shock absorbers anyway, you could just buy the Gen 2 shock absorbers to go with these Gen 2 arms because the top mounts are identical between the Gen 1 and the Gen 2, it's only the bottom. So yeah, so that's worth bearing in mind. If you want to stick with the Gen 1 shock absorbers, then just buy these little adapters and you're laughing, and then you just buy Gen 1 shock absorbers every time you need to replace them. So, what, uh, what we need to do before um, we uh, go any further with this is, I just want to lift the car up, take the wheel off, and we'll have a look at the actual arm that's on the car right now. So uh, let me get it jacked up, get the wheel off, and then we'll, uh, we'll give that a look. Okay, so here we are uh, with the wheel off. We can uh, we can see the trailing arm. We can see how corroded it is. I mean, a lot of this is dirt, but you can see a lot of rust in here. Now, this is, this was picked up, as I said, as an advisory, and it's only going to get worse. It's not going to get any better. You can see here that obviously, whilst it was powder coated from the factory, the powder coat has you know been breached, allowing uh, dirt, moisture, etc., etc., to get in, and then obviously. It's corroded the metal underneath so yeah unless we do something about this it's only going to get worse now what we could have done obviously is taken this arm off given it a good rub down a bit of a blast probably got it repowder coated it would have been fine but that probably would have cost more than just buying a set of gen 2 arms so yeah so that's the reason for this um hopefully this uh this this fix will be a permanent fix that will never probably need to be changed ever again uh that's the plan anyway now, obviously under here we've got the shock absorber and it mounts down here at the bottom. Uh, the brake disc, the caliper, etc. Now the brake disc on this car isn't in particularly great condition. Uh, I do have uh, a full set of brakes for this car, but obviously that's not going to be done in this video. That'll be a completely different video. Um, the drop link here, we, uh, we discussed a moment ago. Uh, and these two, um, these two arms here, stabilizer arms, um, these, uh, these will bolt straight up to the Gen 2 arm. Now the bottom one does have camber adjustment. There is an eccentric, an eccentric adjuster, um, which the, the bolt for that has been included with the arms that I bought. Um, one thing to be mindful of, as we remove the arm from the car, we will affect its steering geometry, well, its suspension geometry. Um, so once we've put this back together, we will need to get it tracked, get the, uh, the wheel alignment done. Uh, otherwise it probably will cause um, you know, uh, accelerated tire wear and all that good stuff. So that's worth bearing in mind. Anyway, what we're going to do in this video is we are going to take the new arm uh, over into the shed, get it on the vice, get it on the bench, and we're going to pull the wheel bear, the old wheel bearing off, pull the front bush off, and, and replace them both. Um, so that's what we're going to do in this video. Um, the next episode with this car. Um, we'll probably be looking at actually fitting it to the car or at least getting the old one off um, So yeah, so there's gonna be uh, two or three videos with this. Um, I'm not gonna do them all in one because it'd be quite lengthy uh, But yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's grab that arm and get it over into the shed Right then so here we are inside the uh, inside the shed and I've got the arm held securely in the vice now what we need to do is we need to remove the wheel bearing and the uh, the front mounting with the uh, with the bushing. Now the wheel bearings hold on from the back with these four bolts here. Now these uh, these are going to be fairly tight, so I've got a small breaker bar here, and what I'll do I'll just uh, crack each one off. There we 
we go. Okay, I'll come back in a minute with a ratchet and get the rest, get the uh, get those bolts out. So now at the front, what we need to do is we do need to remove this bolt here, holding the. Uh, you know, basically that bolts straight through the bush into the arm. So I need to pull that bolt out. Now that sucker is a 20 mil, and this is gonna be pretty tight as well. Make sure it doesn't come out of the vise, obviously. And there we are, we've got that loose. Now, there's a little zip tie here on the ABS sensor uh, cable. Um, now, if I just snip that um, zip tie, this little plastic section here will stay in the arm and then we can fit another zip tie later on after we've uh, after we fix this so what i need to do now is obviously i need to get my uh, ratchet just pull all five of those bolts out and then we're uh, then we're good and there we are so that's the uh four bolts and here's the bearing so one thing worth bearing in mind is that these do go on in a certain orientation you will notice here that there is a little bump just here and that little bump matches the little bump on the arm just above the uh, the ABS sensor so uh, when we fit this we need to make sure that it goes on the right way and what I will do while this is off is obviously give this a little clean out inside prior to fitting the uh, prior to fitting the new bearing. But yeah, so that's the uh, that's the bearing off. Next, what I'll do, I'll pull off the uh, the front bush. Um, it's mostly off. Um, just got the last few threads on the bolt, and there we go. And as you can see, I did snip the little tie wrap, so uh, the cable's free. Right, so if I tuck that back in there, it's out of the way. Right, now, one thing to be mindful of with the bush is that they go in to this section in a certain way. This side of the bush is flat, and that side, obviously, is con convex, which matches the concave feature of the arm, so it does need to go on that way. Um, so, yeah, so that is... Uh, that is that removed and again you've got this plate which goes over the top um, with the uh, with the brush sandwich between it so obviously that's the way we need to put it back together okay what we can do now is um, we can uh, get the new bearer fitted to the arm and we can also look at getting the old bush pressed out of the, uh, the trailing arm now right then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, uh, we'll look at the wheel bearing first um, there is this little plastic cover over it, but that, that's got to come off. And here we can see quite clearly the little hump that I was talking about just here, which obviously matches the little hump on the uh, on the trailing arm. Um, these feel quite stiff when they come out of the box, which you'd expect because they, you know, they're they're, they're newly made, um, so they feel quite nice. Um, but there's no, you know, no, no awkward noises coming from it. Okay, so um, the four bolts that hold the uh, hold the um, the bearing on are different to the bolts that hold the bearing on to the uh, the Gen 1 Mini arm. The bearings themselves are identical. There's no difference between this bearing on a Gen 2 or this bearing on a Gen 1. They are absolutely 100% the same. However, the bolts are different. On the, uh, on the Gen 1, the bolt is probably about two thirds of, si uh, two -thirds of the length, should I say. Of the uh, of the one on the uh, on the Gen Two, so that's worth bearing in mind if you're going to fit. Um, if you bought, you know, you know, Gen One Mini bearings, then you will need to reuse the bolts from the uh, from the Gen Two. Not really a biggie. Um, all I've done here is I've just given the end a bit of a brush up with the with a wire brush, and uh, yeah, they're ready to go in. Okay, so what I am going to do is using a bit of thread lock on each of the bolts because obviously we don't want these coming undone because that will be bad. Um, not going too crazy. Just a little dab. Just a little bit of blue thread lock. And there we go. Right. 
all it is a case of doing is fitting it onto the arm, getting the bolts in and started. touch and that's that right these are 16 mil and the torque setting for these is 56 newton meters so let's spin my torque wrench around to 56 go that's 50 55 and a half there we go 56 and then I'm gonna turn each one and now I'm going opposites on these so I've done this top corner I'm doing the bottom corner now and this one this one and that is that so that is the wheel bearing replaced on um, on the trailing arm uh, so yeah that, that it really is as simple as that that's that is how you change the wheel bearing on a gen 1 or a gen 2 mini it's um, pretty much identical Obviously, when it's on the car, you do have the um, added things of having to take the caliper off the wheel, uh, the brake disc, and all that sort of stuff. So, but yeah, other than that, it's no different um, doing it in the vice as it is on the car once uh, once all that stuff's off. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is we are going to look at getting this old bush out of this uh, trailing arm mount. Now, um, I have the luxury of having a, uh, a press which I can use for this this you know this job um, so that's going to help massively um, however if you don't have one of them you can get a set of bush pullers which will do the same thing but they do take a lot of effort um, so yeah that's worth bearing in mind right anyway without uh, without further ado let's uh, let's get on with pressing this bush out okay so what we need to do is we need to get this bush out of this so that we can uh, so that we can fit a new one and um, what I'll do I'll get the brand new one out of the box and um, show you what it is that we're looking at you can see the con the, uh, the convex end compared to the flat end so obviously it needs to fit into the into the arm this way now there is something we need to do to prep the bush uh, but we'll do that in a second what we're going to do first is we're going to press this bush out but there is a couple of things that we need to be mindful of as you can see here we've got this split um, top and bottom and obviously that split is orientated in this arm in a certain manner so the new bush needs to go in in the same orientation so what i've got here is a little paint pen and i'm gonna just put a little paint mark top and bottom just there like that so that we can see how we uh, how it is that we need to fit the new one when we uh, when we come to fit it right what we'll do if we have a look at this you can see here that this side of this uh, of this mounting is a lot flatter than this side this side kicks out a little bit so uh, when we come to pressing it out we'd be better off resting it that way um, because if we rest it that way as you can see it's going to sit at a weird angle so if we put it that way we should uh, we should get away with it now there's no hard and fast rule on how you uh, how you do this really but it's just a case of trial and error really um, now uh, one thing I will do 
before we begin is these little bits of rubber that are sticking up here which are pretty much broken off anyway i'm going to actually remove them because it will make our life easier getting the getting this to sit because otherwise all it'll do is it'll just squash the rubber and um it'll just squash the rubber and we'll uh not be pressing out the um not be pressing out the bush so there we are just cut it off like that same on the same on the other side pretty pretty knackered in here And there we are. So now that is nice and flat and that will sit nicely on there. So I've got a set of these. I've got, there's, there's about 15 different sizes. So what I've done is I've found the one that fits um, the best uh, for that one. I mean, there are other ones, um, but uh, yeah, this one seems to fit the best. So I'm gonna use this one. I also have a selection of different things like that sort of stuff. These all come out of other bush pushing pressing bearing pressing sets that i've had over the years that have you know become broken or have lost bits or whatever um, but things like that are always useful for jobs such as this i always keep things like this um likewise that i can't even remember what that was off but makes ideal um surface to for that to press on you know what i mean so it's worth uh, always worth keeping things you can use large sockets if you need to um but yeah i think we'll uh, i think we'll be fine with what we've got here so yeah, so what I'll do, I'll get it all set up. We'll get the tension on this and then we'll look at pressing this bush out. Okay, right, I think, I think we're ready to give it a go. Now, this will take a lot of force to press out and it will probably go with a bit of a crack, um, which, you know, does have a tendency to make you jump when you, when you least expected it. So um, the tension is on. All I need to do now is start applying, start applying the pressure, and there it is. There's that. There's that crack I was talking about. And that is the bearing giving way. Sorry, that the bush giving way. It's just not really easy. There we are. So if I release it all off now, and there we go. And there is the crusty old bush. And there is the uh, the trailing arm bracket. Now. Um, what I'm going to do is obviously give all this a bit of a clean up prior to putting the new bush in um, because there's a bit of, bit of corrosion in there. Nothing that won't clean up though. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's done. I mean, I can actually squash that with my, with my hands so that rubber's pretty much perished. And to be fair, it's probably the one that was fitted when it came out of the factory. So uh, this is a Lem Forda one. This is a good quality part. Um, what we need to do is prep this, ready to uh, ready to fit it into the um, ready to fit it into the into the bracket. But what we need to do is we need to compress this um, to close these gaps up to enable us to, you know, to fit it into the uh, into the into the arm. So that's what we'll uh, that's what we'll do next. Okay, so we've got the old bush out. What we need to do is we need to prep the new one. Um, to be inserted into into the, uh, the housing. Again, I haven't cleaned it yet, but I'll do that in a moment. Uh, as you can see, obviously, it's actually slightly ovaled. What we need to do is we need to make it circular. And obviously, because this is a brand new bush, I can't actually squeeze it by hand um, like I could with the old one. So what we're going to do uh, in order to make this uh, in order to make this work is we are going to compress it in a vise. As you can see, just to close it up, I then have a Jubilee clip, which I'm going to fit around the bush, just like so. And then I can take it out of the vise, and as you can see, it's remained compressed. 
Now, all this is for is just to get the uh, just to get the bush started. It doesn't um, stay on there all the time. Obviously, once once it's in up to that point, I can then take this jubilee clip off, and it will stay there because it'll be half into the uh, half into the housing. Obviously, if you haven't got a jubilee clip, you could do the same with uh, tie wraps if you had some pretty hench ones. Um, but obviously, a jubilee clip would be ideal. Okay, right. What I'm going to do? I'm going to give this a quick uh, give this a quick clean, and then we can get that pressed in. Okay, so now we've uh, we've got the. Uh, I'm giving it as good a clean as I'm going to get it. I mean, you know, you could go to the effort of painting this if you know that's what tickles your pickle. You know, crack on. You get powder coated, whatever. Um, but uh, you know, I'm happy with this for uh, for the for now. Okay, so what I need to do is um, I need to get this pressed in. Um, what I do need to do is I need to support this in the right position. Um, and obviously I need to fashion something to, you know, enable me to be able to press that in, um, like so. Um, to be fair, um, with it compressed, it's actually almost fell into, into position as it goes. Um, you can see it's almost uh, fell in. If I was, it's not quite down on all sides, it's actually sitting ever so slightly skew with, but, you know, it's doing okay. Um, I'm actually quite happy with that. Um, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of these um, to push it down because I don't want to compress um, all of this rubber prior to, um, you know, prior to it being pushed in. So I'll probably use one of these blocks to, uh, to try and um, push it down. Um, and I think that may need me to lower this ever so slightly because I don't think I've got any more room. I think I've raised it up as high as it's going to go. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do. Drop that down like so. And then that will sit across just like that. And then we can lower that down. more I've got to give it to be fair but uh, once we get started we can then uh, we can then wobble it around the way we need it to go okay so just making sure that the gaps in the uh, bush are lined up with the uh, the paint pen marks that I made So it's going to push down the centre of the bush first before we get to the outside of the bush. And here we go. So we're now starting to press the bush in and it's inside the housing. So now we can release the Jubilee clip. And what I'll do is undo it as far as it goes so we can actually and actually you have to then take the pressure off and restart it. And there we are, just like so. And then carry on pressing the bush in. Now, what I'm going to aim to do is the bush is ever so slightly wider than this housing. So I want to get equal amounts of the bush either side of the housing, if you know what I mean. Um, just to make it so that it sits right. I've, I've actually run out of um, press, in effect. I won't go any further than that. So what I can do is release it. 
So yeah, as you can see, it's going in nicely. It's going in perfectly square, exactly how I want it to go. Um, but yeah, we need to uh, obviously raise raise this up. Um, I do have some other ones of these that I'll grab. Uh, I reckon that one will probably do the job. Um, and then, yeah, there we go. And I'll raise it up a bit more. Just like so. We can now get our block back in and press it again. But yeah, what I want to do, obviously, is get the bush as central into the bracket as I can. stop there and we'll look at how equal it is into the bracket and I'd say we're not far off to be fair um, in fact I'm gonna call that good as you can see we've, we're pretty much pretty much even either side um, obviously, as I said earlier, we will need to do a wheel, uh, a wheel alignment on this uh, on this car now anyway. And obviously, the adjustment that this allows us to have will take up any difference in whether the bush is half a mil that side or half a mil that side anyway. So, you know, that's worth bearing in mind. Okay, so, yeah, happy with that. The bush is fitted into the bracket. What we need to do now is fit it back onto the trailer now. All right then, uh, so that's the bush fitted uh, into the bracket. What we need to do now is obviously take our bolt with a little plate and fit it onto the trailing arm. Uh, it'll just simply be a case of fitting the bolt through, just like so. Taking my ratchet. That is a little bit tighter than I want to be. Right, there we go. Okay, that is as tight as I want to make that for now. Now, the reason for this is because this pivot bolt, once it's um, torqued up to spec, this plate will compress this bush. Um, and uh, what will happen is that will set the position for this bush. What we need to do is put the weight of the car uh, on, on this arm and then torque this bush. That way, um, the, the bush isn't being set in this position then the weight of the car so that the rubber section is being is twisted um because that will cause premature wear in the bush so the weight of the car needs to be on 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 it prior to prior to tightening this up so that's worth bearing in mind anyway that is the wheel bearing and the front bush replaced on uh on the gen 2 well gen, gen 1 and 2 minis uh, it really is that easy. So yeah, if you uh, if you wondered how to replace a bearing or how to replace a front bush, that's exactly how you do it. Uh, obviously, what I need to do now is I need to, you know, copy and paste this onto the other side because I've got the other arm uh, to do as well. So I'll get on with that off camera. But uh, yeah, I'm going to wrap this episode up here. So hopefully you uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. 
Uh, if you did, then not, you know, obviously leave a comment below and uh, I'll do what I can to get back to you. If you want to join us on the socials, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, the links to all three of those are in the uh, in the description. Uh, and yeah, I'll, uh, what I'll do, I'll leave links to the bushes and the, and the parts that I've used, uh, again, in the description below so you can go and check them out if you need to. Anyway guys, thank you very much for stopping by, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all again for the next episode where, uh, with, this, with the Mini where hopefully I will be uh, able to take the old one off and get the new one on. So uh, yeah, see you all again very soon, take care, bye bye now.